Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Stallings, you know me here on YouTube as Marauder X, and as always I'm your host for Operation Recap, where I take some of those stories from Op Rainfall, and I share them here on YouTube because I live on YouTube and I'm a glutton for punishment, and I do the same thing over and over again. And as always, I've got, you know, a couple of stories that I want to share with you guys. First off this week, we've got some Smash news. Again, always Smash news, topping the charge. Uh, if you are one of the lucky few, and I say few, but uh, I'm sure they're a good number, uh, who happen to have purchased and registered both the 3DS and Wii U versions of Smash Brothers, you have picked up, or at least gotten a code for, Mewtwo. Mewtwo is available for everyone who picked up the games and registered them. Uh, they got it early. Uh, he will be available as purchasable DLC very shortly, if not already by the time this video actually goes up. Problem, though, with Mewtwo, there's a glitch being reported that can corrupt the save data, and it involves the Tin Man Smash. So, if you are going through doing events with Mewtwo, just to say you've got everything through, be very, very careful, because, yeah... No one knows what's going on. Uh, Nintendo had not heard of the glitch as of the time of reporting the story. Uh, they said they're looking into it. Um, there is no fix at the moment because, again, Nintendo hadn't heard about it. So uh, just be very careful with that until more information arrives about how to fix that. Yeah, because you don't want your sleep data glitch because then you got to go through and do everything again. And that's just, that just sucks. So, yeah, don't don't do that. More Smash news about it, uh, same story, just kind of leading in. Uh, this falls under the category of a rumor, but it got the internet all the buzz that um, a Reddit user said that they found sound files in the 1.06 update that brought Mewtwo and some of the other uh, DLC uh, changes that they've added uh, in the form of sound files. And the biggest thing is the sound files kind of freaked people out. Uh, because two of them are named, one of them is named Roy, one of them is named Ryu. So the huge rumor right now is that Roy from Fire Emblem is going to be making a return as a DLC character, as is Ryu from Street Fighter fame. Now, this is all incredibly nebulous. Like, the, the, if you look at the, the sound file particularly, particular, it's SND underscore BGM underscore Z83 underscore F underscore Roy underscore 3DS dot in us three bank that's the name of the file ah, it's incredibly nebulous now some of them some say mewtwo or lucas so there's there's a little bit of legitimacy behind it but it could be a lot of things i mean i wouldn't mind seeing roy back i like sword users i'd rather see a couple other ones you know like lloyd irving that i voted for in our little poll uh and i nominated for that poll uh, Ryu's neat, you know, definitely not a character I would have expected, considering, you know, Capcom doesn't seem all that interested in a lot of them. I mean, they, they, they let... I, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's... Let Mega Man show up, but... Mega Man seems a little bit more Nintendo than Street Fighter to me. I don't know why. I mean, S Street Fighter 2 Turbo was a good SNES game. Anyway, I'd like to see both characters. I'd like to see more characters, you know, in general. So, you know, the more characters, the better. But, uh, it's a rumor for now, but it'd be interesting. So, the second story of this week is, uh, Game Arts, a company that, you know, a lot of people probably haven't heard of, which is a shame because they make some fantastic games, uh, has put up a, a survey themselves. Uh, what PC ports of their franchise would you like to see? Now, Game Arts is known, f at least, you know, to me, for the Lunar series and the Grandia series. Uh, they've also done uh, a little bit of the Ragnarok, on uh, Ragnarok Odyssey games. Uh, so they've, they've done a fair bit, but Lunar and Grandia really are my, my two favorite ones. And I would love to see more PC ports, because I'd love to see these franchises hopefully get a little bit of, you know, new blood in them for resurrection purposes. Like, if you see a new uh, Lunar 1 and 2 just get reported everywhere, they're on all sorts of systems. But I, if you saw, you know, a PC port, maybe it would actually inspire them to make Lunar 3. Or, you know, Grandia 2 actually did get a PC port uh, from the Dreamcast version. The PC port was less than favorable. This is back when PC ports were just looked on as, like, 
eh, we'll just throw it out there and maybe it'll make a couple of bucks type deals. So nowadays a PC port can really help keep a franchise going. And a game like Grandia, I would love to see, you know, Grandia 1 remastered for PC, Grandia 2 remastered in a engine that doesn't kind of suck. That would be great. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe get a Grandia 4. It's been several years. I'd love to see a new Grandia game. So go check that out. If you're familiar with anything that Game Arts has done, they are doing a survey of what you would like to see, and I strongly recommend if there is anything you'd like to see, just show it out. I, you know, games getting more exposure on any platform is always a good thing. So go, go check that out. And the last story for the week is more Sega 3DS classics coming to the 3DS, or Sega 3D classics, excuse me. Uh, they, they've been remastering games in 3D to put on the 3DS to take advantage of the 3DS's 3D feature. Uh, a lot of games, you know, were really, really successful, games like Outrun and the uh, Afterburner, games that the 3D really kind of added to, given their arcade legacy. And they just kind of took the ball and roll, went with it. And uh, this new batch of 3DS uh, 3D classics are going to be Gunstar Heroes, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and Streets of Rage 2. Really great games. <laughs> like, I can't begin to tell you how awesome uh, it is to see some of these games. Like, I love Streets of Rage 2. It's one of my favorite games on the Genesis. Uh, Gunstar Heroes, again, just amazing. And Sonic... The Hedgehog 2 is just a classic by every stretch of the imagination. So seeing these get a little bit of a, a 3D upgrade and released on the 3DS, as much as I hate to say good job to Sega, good job to Sega. It's just really painting, like I just want to stab myself instead of having to say it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm glad to see these games come out, uh, mostly because I love the 3DS. I don't so much like the 3D feature, I really can't use it. My my glasses and my eyes really prevent me from fully experiencing the 3D feature. The new 3DS 3D feature is a little bit easier to use because it has the face tracking, so I don't have to specifically hold it at a set distance and just hope that I can keep focused on that. Uh, but the new one actually does help a little bit on that. It still gives me, you know, slight headache after, you know, a short time. But I'm glad to see that, you know, they're continuing with this this project as opposed to just dropping it like so many other things that I could name like Shining Force anyway I'm going to stop being salty about that for now uh, but uh, those are going to be out uh, in July so uh, yeah July well July for Gunstar Heroes Streets of Rage is July Gunstar Heroes is August and Sonic is in September Wow, I read those all backwards. So, yeah. So they will be out uh, in the near future. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. And that's the news for this week. Those are the stories for this week. Um, links are going to be in the video description below. There's going to be a ton of other stuff. So go check out Opera Info. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. And uh, I will see you guys next week for another recap. Till then, later, everyone.